Hey folks, I'm Mr. Lauer, your woodshop teacher, and in this video, we're going to be finishing the framing of our 3D shed model in SketchUp. In this video, we're going to be working on the roof structure. Now the roof is going to be a simple shed roof style, which is basically a flat roof that's been pitched up at a certain angle. We're going to accomplish this by creating a riser, which is just a little wall on top of the existing wall. And we're going to learn how to make our 2x6 rafters using the rotated rectangle tool. Another thing that we're going to be using is the solid tools function to cut out these bird's mouths, which is going to be necessary for the rafters to sit flush on top of our walls. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I've done here is I basically took everything that we did in the last two videos and I just colored everything dark gray. And that's so that everything stands out against what I'm about to do. After a while, all these studs start to run into each other and visually it's kind of hard to pick them all out. So I'm just trying to do us all a favor here. Now to start with this roof, I'm gonna begin with a riser. Now a riser is simply going to be a little miniature wall. And I'm gonna build that across the top of the front here. We have 10 foot comma 3.5. It's just like what we did in the last video when we started with a sole plate or base plate, whatever you wanna call it. We are going to bring this up 1.5. So again, it's just a two by four that is turned on its side. We're gonna triple click this. We're gonna call this riser base. Now, if we follow the tutorial from the last video where we were making our wall, our next step is to figure out how tall we want this riser to be, and that is gonna be the top of our top plate. So I'm gonna take my tape measure tool, and this is the part where you have to decide how tall you want your shed. The taller you have your riser, the more pitch your shed roof is going to have, which can have some benefits depending on where you're building this shed. If this is in a really snowy climate, you've got a lot of weight in the form of water, ice that can pack on top of your roof, you may actually want a slightly steeper pitch so that material can run off the end. However, I find that a two foot pitch is probably enough. Uh, considering a 10 foot span, we're looking at a 10 to two, that should be enough for rain, light rain, and uh, wind and stuff like that. So we're gonna go with two feet. But again, depending on your needs and your location, you may want a steeper or less steep pitch. So we're gonna do a move copy and bring, hit our up arrow and bring this all the way up to the top of our guideline here. And that is going to be the upper limit to our riser. Another thing to keep in mind is that depending on your jurisdiction, in addition to the overall footprint of your shed, you may also have height restrictions as well. So for example, a city could say that your shed can be 10 foot by 10 foot, but it can't be taller than six feet or can't be taller than eight feet, in which case you would need to modify this structure to fit your specific needs. Make sure you're always checking with your city or county's planning department so that you can find out what you can get away with without a permit. All right, so we're gonna build our riser wall. This is going to be 1.5 by 3.5 for the stud on the end. We'll go ahead and raise that up, triple click and make this riser stud. And then we're going to move copy this all the way over here. And like before, we're going to fill out our 16 inch spacing. So 16 inches times, was it eight? That was too many times seven. There we go. We'll call that good. Now notice that most of our studs align with the studs below it. And that's exactly what we want. That's what we wanted to accomplish. Uh, there's a few situations where you have some studs not aligned, like where you have these cripples here. Generally, that's not gonna be that big of a deal. Your alternative is to start moving studs over and lining them with your cripples. 
When we get to the part where we start putting sheathing and plywood on this thing, we may have to move some studs around to make this fit, but that's the nice thing about doing this in SketchUp. If you get later in your project and you realize, hey, I gotta move these studs over, I have to move this wall over, you can easily do that much better than you can sketching it out on pencil and paper. Now, for example, this one right here, I like a little bit of consistency since I had to move this one over. I am going to do a uh, sideways stud here just to, it's not going to be a three stud corner, but I do want to strengthen my corners just a little bit. So I'm actually going to just line this one up. I'm going to take my guideline up from the one below it, and that keeps my guideline going straight up. And then I'm just going to move this one over here. That way I have just a little bit more consistency here. It just makes me feel better. All right, like down below, I want to have a sideways stud in these corners. It may or may not be absolutely necessary to do something like this for such a short wall. But again, I'm doing it because it makes me feel better. I know that it's going to strengthen my corners and for the cost and effort, which is fairly minimal for a piece like this, it's going to give me more peace of mind. So there we go. We have a little two stud corner there, and that is just going to help keep that riser from racking side to side. All right, now we have the height of our ceiling or roof established. We can start adding in the rafters. So the rafters, I've decided I'm going to use two by sixes. So let's go ahead and make one, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the where's and what's and why's. So to make the rafter, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. The rafter needs to be existing at an angle, a slight angle. I don't know what the angle is right now. That's the beauty of SketchUp. I can model this out so that things attach to where they're supposed to attach, and then I can figure out dimensions and angles after the fact. It really saves on brain power having the computer do the calculations for you. So here we go. Now I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, but instead of the regular rectangle, I'm going to pick the second one down, which is rotated rectangle. This one is really useful. It's a little tricky to use, but it saves me a lot of time. I'm going to make a series of clicks here. I want to start by clicking on this upper outer corner here. So I'm going to click there first. And then I'm going to go to right in between my double top plate. So the bottom outer corner of the double top plate, not this one, this one right here. That, that's where I want it. So I'm going to click there. Now what you can see is you can see some stuff happening. So right here I have an angle. So this allows me, this rotated rectangle tool allows me to start a rectangle at any angle that I want. You can see that it says red right here. And then down here, I have two measurements, width and angle. So when I type in numbers, that's what's going to fill in. So my width, I definitely want 5.5, okay? Of course, I move it and it changes again. So my width, I want 5.5. Now for the angle, that's going to depend on how you click this into existence. And this is where it gets a little tricky and people get confused. So if I'm moving this around the angle that I want, you can see that it's wanting to try to snap to 90 degrees. So you look at that down there, it's trying to get to 90 degrees. This red axis here is zero. So since it wants to try and get to 90 degrees, I'm just gonna trust it. I'm gonna say, okay, yeah, you wanna be 90 degrees, you could be 90 degrees. So we'll type in 5.5 comma 90, and that is exactly what we want. We want it nice and flush with the wall, we don't want it at some funky angle. Now, that may depend whether you type 90 or zero, that may depend on some factors. So for example, if I go up from the other side, you can see my red axis is going in this other weird direction. So I've got my width, but then now it's wanting to snap to zero. So that's one thing with SketchUp you have to pay attention to depending on how you click it and what axis it starts with, it may be better to type in 90. It may be better to type in zero degrees. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing. I'm sorry, there's no better way to do it. Just pay attention. Okay, so 5.5, and in this case, we're doing zero degrees. Good news is, if you do something and it doesn't give you what you expected, just undo it and try it again. 
This is a two by six, so we'll push pull it into uh, 1.5. And we'll go ahead and double click that, sorry, triple click that make component, we'll call this rafter. That's the rafter we're after. Why am I like this? All right, there's a few things that we need to do next. First, we need to extend the front and back out uh, to form some eaves. It doesn't really matter how far your eaves come out. Well, it may matter because your jurisdiction, city or county may count the roof footprint as opposed to the floor footprint when calculating your overall width. So for example, you may build a shed that's 10 foot by 10 foot, but your eaves overhang by eight inches or 10 inches or 12 inches on both sides. So technically your city might count that as 10 foot by 12 foot. So just keep in mind, make sure you pay attention to the language that your jurisdiction uses. I'm going to just bring out my eaves. I'm, I'm just throwing a number out here. We'll just say eight inches. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's a decent size. Gives us a little bit of eaves, a little bit of protection, but it's not egregious. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Bring this out eight inches. Okay, so far so good. Now before we continue, I wanna talk really quick about our decision to use a two by six, okay? Now I've actually built a shed very similar to this. That's where I got the design for this in the first place was I built a shed like this last year. And for my roof, I, I did something very similar, but I used two by fours for the rafters, which honestly, it works just fine. A shed roof is not really going to have a lot of weight on top of it. You're, you, you walk on it so that you can get your roofing material on and then you don't really ever go on top of your shed ever again. Uh, you're not having parties up there. You shouldn't be having parties on top of your shed, that's weird. So it's not really gonna hold a lot of weight. Uh, chances are you'll be fine with a two by four rafter spanning that, that 10 foot space or 11 foot space or whatever that length is. However, depending on your use case scenario for your shed, perhaps you want to hang some heavy hanging shelves or you have a lot of heavy equipment that you wanna hang from your rafters. In that case, you may want to upgrade to some beefier two by sixes. Now, two by sixes do cost more money than two by fours. So if it's a situation where you've got the money and you can future proof for any potential contingencies, you might as well go with the two by six and just have that little extra strength. But I understand wanting to just go with the two by four rafters, you can probably get away with it. If you're building a house as opposed to a shed, I'm not a permit guy, I'm not your local inspector, you're gonna have to check with them. So here we go, we've got our two by six rafter, some other things we need to do with it. Now, you can see here, we did this on the very edge, you can see this little overlap right here. And what we're gonna need to do is actually notch out uh, this rafter by this amount and that's gonna be called a bird's mouth, okay? A bird's mouth is really important in roof construction because when you have an angled framing member on top of a wall, which is typically going to be flat, level, horizontal, you've got this angled piece, it needs to sit flat on your wall. And to do that, what construction workers will do, what framers will do, is they will cut a notch corresponding to the angle that this needs to sit on the wall. And that's very important because you need this rafter to sit flat on your wall. It can't sit at an angle. If we uh, try and sit it at an angle like that, I mean, you should be able to tell just by looking that this does not look stable at all. First of all, you don't have anywhere to nail into. Um, and second, you're just, you don't have any friction. You don't have any points of contact. It's not gonna stay. So. How do we notch this out? How do we cut this out in SketchUp? We, we can do two ways, I'll show you both ways. First, we can just use our push-pull tool like we already know how to do. So we'll double click on this rafter. You can see a little overlap here. We're going to trace over this, these two lines. We'll just trace that out right there. And now we can push-pull this. We're gonna push-pull this to the opposite side 
and that will effectively give us our little bird's mouth there. The other way that we can do this is using the solid tools function. If you've never used the solid tools function, it can get a little confusing, but is super powerful in making custom shapes. So what we're gonna use is the trim tool. So I'm gonna deselect everything. And this is another way you can do it. You, you can do it the other way too, but this is a second way. We're gonna go to this tool here. We're going to go to the one, two, three, fourth one down right here. This is your trim tool. So we're gonna use one object as like a cookie cutter to cut out another object, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna do our first click on this top plate, and our second click is gonna be on the rafter. Now when we do that, basically takes the top plate and says, okay, I want you to use this shape as an eraser for the rafter, and then we get, and then we get our bird's mouth. Just like that, pretty easy. Now, if you accidentally do it the other way around, it's really common to, uh, let's say I accidentally click on my rafter first and then click on my top plate. It's gonna end up doing something like this, which is what we don't want. We do not wanna cut like this. It's not nearly as stable and uh, yeah, we, that's not your bird's mouth. You, you don't want that, you don't want that. So we'll do it right here and that is what we want. One downside of using the solid tools, and I have not figured out a solution for this, is that solid tools destroys your components. What I mean by that is now this is no longer a component, it has turned it into a group. So what that looks like is if I do a move copy here, if this were an actual component and I go to edit this, then both of them should edit at the same time, but they don't because they're no longer a component. This is now a group. So whenever you use solid tools, you need to remember to make that piece back into a component. Um, and ideally you do that before you start making a bunch of copies of this thing. So we're gonna right click, make component. We're just gonna call this rafter. It says there was already one called rafter cause that's true, but we're gonna replace it. And now we have our component. So since this is a component, what we can do is we can move copy this over and it's just like making a wall. We're gonna bring one over to the far side here. And for our rafters, we are going to do 24 inch centers. It's a two by six, it can support it. Also 24 inch centers, you could get away with putting some um, three quarter inch uh, OSB sheathing on top um, underneath your roofing material. It's probably not gonna sag that much. If you're worried about it, you can do 16 inch centers, um, but that gets really expensive if you're using two by sixes. So you may wanna just stick with two by fours if that's the case. But we're using two by sixes, so we're gonna go uh, 24 inches and then we'll multiply that by times five. Nope, that's too many times four. And that'll get us what we need. So we have 24 inch centers, except for this last little bit is just a, a little bit in, but that's okay, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. So this is starting to take some shape here. All right, there's a few other things that we need to take care of. First off is we want to cut off the ends uh, on the top side especially, we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom side, but on the top side, we don't want our rafters angling upwards towards the sky. That just invites all sorts of, you know, rainwater to just kind of hang out on these faces. So we want some vertical faces here. Uh, so we're gonna double click on one rafter and then we're going to just draw a line straight down. Make sure it's on the blue axis. We can draw it straight down and push pull and that will cut that off. So we have a nice vertical face right there. Now, if for some reason, if you didn't do the rotated rectangle tool, if you made a rectangle and then used the rotate tool to rotate it up into place, you may not be able to snap to the vertical, um, the vertical axis. And if that's the case, that's not a big deal. We can just take a, uh, our tape measure tool and bring a guideline out and match it up with that upper corner and then just trace that down like so and push pull it out of existence. And that will work just fine. Either way you do it, you want a vertical face 
on the edges of your rafters. Now on the ends, it's not as important that you put a vertical face on this. Um, I like to keep things consistent. If I'm gonna put a vertical face on the upper side, I wanna put another one on the lower side too. Um, it just kind of depends on your taste. It's not as important, I say, because these are angling downwards. So it's not as likely that water is going to, you know, hang out on those faces and rot out your rafters. But to do this, I just repeat that process, draw a line up the blue axis, push pull it out. Now I've seen some people get a little fancy with this. They do some extra cuts. Uh, they make it look like this and they just, they make an additional cut like so. This can be helpful um, because it won't encroach on you when you start putting up your sheathing. You don't have this little extra angle you have to kind of notch out or file out. And this can kind of look nice if that's the look that you're going for, but that's not what I did for my shed. I just kind of left it like so. But it's your shed. You can do it however you want. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of fascia to the front. This is going to help tie in all of these rafters. Um, but it's also going to be sort of kind of a decorative aspect to this. So we're just going to make a rectangle across the front here. Now you could bring it all the way to the edge here, but that's like five and five eighths. So depending on what type of material you're using for your fascia, if you're using a two by six, you're gonna have to do 10 feet by 5.5, in which case you get a little bit of exposed bit here, but that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times though, people will use whatever material they're gonna use for their trim. So if you're getting some trim that's pre-made, you're probably looking at an inch thick trim uh, between three quarters to an inch. So let's do an inch. And that is going to help just tie everything together. It, it will help hold your rafters in place a little bit, but it's also meant to make things look a little cleaner, like you have a more solid roof. Now we're going to triple click this and make it a component. We're gonna call this uh, roof fascia. And then we are going to move copy and create one more for the lower side. And don't worry too much about this little lip right here. I, I never worry about that. On the ends, we end up putting like little rain caps anyway that fold over and it's really not that big a deal. Now, one thing I should point out about fascia is when we get into some of the later steps of putting some plywood sheathing on here um, and trim and stuff is for our design, we're gonna need to extend the ends of the fascia out so that it covers whatever material we're also skinning the sides with. But again, that's the nice thing about using SketchUp is we can put this in place for now and we can extend it out later to whatever uh, size we need. The last thing that we need to do is we need to fill in some of this gap in here with some braces. Now, we don't really need to do this all that much for structural issues. Um, it, it does provide a little bit of strength for the ends and the corners, which is helpful. But really what we're doing this for is so that we have some continuation of these lower studs up through uh, to the top of the, to the underside of the roof. Um, that's gonna be important when we start putting some sheathing on here. We want our seams in our plywood to line up and have something to attach to. Just like when we were making our floors, we don't want any unsupported plywood seams when we put this on here, when we put it on later. So we wanna make sure that we have something that we can actually nail or screw into up above. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring this up like so. Um, with my tape measure tool from this corner and just get a guideline going. And then I'm going to make a rectangle. Now my rectangle is going to be turned sideways because if you look at this um, rafter, you can see that it's turned sideways and it only takes up about half of the footprint of this wall. So I'm going to make my braces match. So we got 1.5 3.5 I'm going to bring this up. Now for this one, I'm gonna be using my solid tools. Again, you can use your push-pull and line it out and do that if you're more comfortable with that. I'm gonna be using solid tools because it's a little bit quicker. So I'm just gonna bring this up somewhere inside the rafter. I don't want it too high, 
but I want the entire thing covered by a rafter. And I'm gonna triple click and I'm just gonna make this a group. I could make it a component, but my solid tools are gonna ruin my components and I'm gonna be making different versions of these. So I'm just gonna stick with a group for now. Now I'm gonna use my solid tools, trim tool, click once here, click twice there, and that will cut that off exactly where it needs to be. Looks good. Okay. So I'm going to actually bring this down and let's see if I can get 16 inch centers. We'll bring it exactly where I need. We'll do times three. How's that look? Times four. This little guy is probably overkill, but when have I not done something overkill? So again, solid tools, we're going to Pick our trim tool, click once here, click twice there, click twice there, click twice there, click twice there. Now, you see that it just cut this off. I probably would have been better off with my push-pull tool in this situation, but I can just double-click to get in there, triple-click that, and delete it. There's different ways to accomplish that, but um, that's the way I just did it. All right, now I'm gonna just control click to select all five of these. And we are going to pick up this corner here and do a move copy. Make sure you're going along the correct axis. I think it's the red axis. Yeah, so I hit the right button to go along the red axis and then just bring it to this outer wall here and it should line up in place like that. And I've got everything all situated perfectly. Now, the nice thing is, as I mentioned before, I did not have to calculate any angles of this ahead of time. I just put things where I wanted them to and then let SketchUp do all the rest of the work. So I can check what my angle is going to be with my protractor tool. So I can go to this right here, click there. And it looks like I'm about a 12 degree angle, which is pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with that. It would be nice to have a 14 degree angle, but I think 12 degrees is okay. So that means any angled cuts that I need to make, I can go from there. So that's 12 degrees. When I use my speed square to actually cut this with a circular saw, I know that 12 degrees is going to be the magic number that I need to make this happen. And I didn't have to calculate that ahead of time, which was awesome. Okay, so just to recap what we have done in this video is we started with a riser, which is essentially just a wall on top of your wall. We then added in the rafters with the rotated rectangle tool. We created bird's mouths. We cut the ends off so that we could put some fascia in, and then we spaced everything out with some spacer studs underneath the roof. And that's gonna do it for the framing portion of this project. We still have a bit to go with the sheathing and any trim, but we'll save that for the next video. See you next time.